Welcome to Netrunner, where elite underground hackers attempt to dismantle an evil, faceless corporation. As a crafty hacker, I'll be utilizing a bag of tricks in the form of this deck of cards. Inside lie plenty of tools, a dash of ingenuity, and more than a few ways to break the ice. First, I'll set out these markers to indicate the number of actions I'll have access to during my turn, as well as create the central bank where I can acquire extra credits, since I'm only going to be starting with five. Once I've collected my starting hand and credits, I'm ready to take down the corporation. Speaking of... Our prime competitor is positioned to beat us into the market if it becomes apprised of our plans. Project Invito is nearing completion. Security integrity is critical. The corporation is both faceless and evil, hatching multitudes of twisted plans to prey on the minds of the easily controlled. Their goal is to fulfill these agenda cards, which symbolize their nefarious schemes for money or power. As the runner, I'm looking to snag these cards from the corporation's servers before they can advance them enough to score them. If I can manage to steal them myself, I'll instead score the points shown on the left side of the card. First to seven agenda points is the winner. We're both after the same thing, but just in different ways. Of course, the corporation isn't about to leave their precious plans to chance. Instead, they've employed some serious cybersecurity called ICE, which comes with an activation cost and a defense value. Comes in multiple flavors too, from traps and barriers to sentries and code gates. All dangerous. Of course, what would a corporation be without its assets? These can masquerade as agendas in the cat and mouse shell game that is net running. These cards come with their own activation cost and can give the corporation the cutting edge they need to fulfill their schemes and manipulate the game state. As you see here, this is the trash cost. As the runner, I can spend that many credits in order to get rid of that card when I encounter it. For now, we'll go ahead and shuffle up the corporation's deck, set it aside. Hello, kitty. During my turn, I can spend one of my four actions to do one of the following. I can draw a card from my deck. I can gain one credit from the central bank and add it to my holdings. I can install a program, piece of hardware, or a resource into an area called the rig. These are the tools I'll be using to overcome the corporation's security measures and help me accumulate more resources like cards or extra credits. I can play an event or prep card, which will activate one time and then be discarded. This one lets me search through my deck for any card and put it into my hand. I could also pay two credits to remove a tag, which is what's used by the corporation to track my location. Bye bye. Oh, you're better than the corporation. The corporation is well protected with ice cards securing their discard pile deck and starting hand. Each turn they'll roll a single die to choose which action they'll execute. Here they've rolled a 2, which says they'll place a new piece of ice in front of their HQ, which holds their hand of cards. Now for my first action, or click, I'm going to go ahead and play this short-term contract card in order to gain a bunch of money. I'll pay my one credit to the bank and place the card out in my rig area, also placing the extra money on top of it. For my second click, I'm going to go ahead and play this Mantis Fixer at Large card, paying three credits to the bank, and then activating his ability. This ability is super useful, enabling me to search my deck of cards, or stack, for one card. I'm going to grab Raptor out of the deck, which is a one-cost icebreaker that's going to let me deal with some of the harder securities that the corporation's going to be throwing out. It's going to go right into my hand, and then I'm going to shuffle up my stack. For my third click, I'm going to go ahead and spend my remaining credit in order to play Raptor from my hand into my rig area. And for my final click, since it's gonna be a free card to play, I'll go ahead and put out my Green Knight Surge buffer. This is gonna help me prevent taking extra damage during the turn. Now it's time for the corporation to roll. They've rolled a four, which allows them to gain an extra card into their hand from the R&D deck. For this next turn, I'm going to go ahead and keep it pretty simple. Just spending clicks in order to be able to gain credits from my short-term contract. My final click, I'm going to go ahead and draw one card from my stack, which turns out to be the Wizard's Book. This is quite a nice little icebreaker. It's going to be used to deal with code gates. It's a little expensive at a cost of five, but with a strength of two, it's not bad. 
Now that my turn's done, the corporation's gonna go ahead and roll. They rolled a one, which is gonna let them put one ice card face down over their archives or R&D, whichever has the fewest. Of course, in the case of a tie, I'll have to choose. Now it's time to run on the corporation's servers. I'm gonna go ahead and attack their R&D, which leads me into the Wall of Thorn. This is a five strength ice barrier that I unfortunately am not gonna be able to deal with. All I have right now is the Sentry Raptor that I placed out earlier. Because of this, I'm gonna have to take two net damage, which will be one less because of the Green Knight Surge buffer I have. If I take more net damage than I have cards in my hand, then I'll lose the game. For my second click, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a card, which turns out to be Hammer, a wall icebreaker. For my third click, I'm gonna go ahead and draw one more card, which turns out to be Gideon's Pawn Shop, a useful card for finding cards from my discard, or trash, to put back into my hand. For my final click, I'm gonna go ahead and spend two credits in order to play the Gideon's Pawn Shop to take back one of the cards into my hand. The corporation rolls a three, which is gonna allow them to put ice above the remote server with the fewest ice. Remote servers are where the corporation hides its most valuable assets, including the agenda cards I'm seeking. For my first click this turn, I'm going to play Mantis Fixer at Large from my hand in order to grab the News Group filter from my stack. The News Group filter is an exceptional card, allowing me to spend one click in order to gain two credits. For my second click, I'm going to go ahead and grab two more credits from the short-term contract. This will allow me to have enough credits to place out the News Group filter on my third click. I'll pay the credits to the bank, as usual, and I'll go ahead and place it out in my rig. For my final click, I'll go ahead and activate the News Group filter and grab two credits. Now the corporation rolls a two, which will allow them to place one ice card above HQ. In addition, they'll also place one advancement token on each remote server card that they have active. For my first click, I'll be playing Hammer this turn. So I'll go ahead and flip my token, spend the two credits back to the bank, and play the card out into my rig. For the next two clicks, I'm going to go ahead and grab all the credits off of the short-term contract and discard it. For my last click, I'm going to go ahead and just grab two more credits using the News Group filter. The corporation is now going to add another token to the remote server, and then they're going to roll a 6. This is going to have them place one R&D card into an empty remote server. If none exist, we're going to go ahead and create one, placing one card from R&D into the server, and then placing an ice to protect it. As my first action for this round, I'm going to go ahead and run on the remote server with two advancement tokens. I run into an Enigma, which is a two-strength code gate. Unfortunately, I can't break it, so this is going to cause me to lose one of my clicks for the turn. For my next action, I'm going to go ahead and spend 5 credits to play the Wizard's Book from my hand into my rig. This is a 2 strength code gate icebreaker that can help me deal with that enigma that I ran into. For my last click, I'm going to go ahead and use that in order to run on that server once again. I have 2 strength initially, and it starts out with 2 strength. As long as I match it, I can get through the ice and check the remote server underneath. And of course, it's a snare. That's going to hit me for 3 damage, and having only one card left, that means I'm out.